you can no longer get the sugar out of the blood, and so the sugar raises and you are now a diabetic. But don't worry, there's a medication for that, but is that really solving the problem? It's just taking one problem and pushing it somewhere else. The sugar has to go somewhere. That medication just drives it in other places in the body. I developed a tremendous amount of inflammation in my hands, my back. I have inflammation all over the place. Where's this coming from? I just switched my breakfast meal for a meat. All the inflammation started going away. I'm like, you got to be kidding. I think a lot of people have inflammation. They're covering up with medications, but they don't realize most of it's coming from food because everything is not the same because they kind of lump in together. Oh yeah, red meat is just as bad as processed meat. Really? Where did you get that from? One of these main agendas that's happening in the world right now, the censorship happening against keto. Well, you hear so many bad things. Keto causes bad breath, ketoacidosis, it's like the heart disease and kidney stones and keto crot. Wait a second, I've never had any patient ever even complained about that. Some doctors say, oh, keto kills you. But if you take a look at some of the sites, the vegan sites, the plant-based sites, their whole mission is not to promote veganism, it's to promote, to attack fake facts. This whole attack against keto really comes down to one thing, keto works. I've been in the health space since 2008, got into keto in 2013, and Dr. Berg has been a huge inspiration for me since I came across his incredible YouTube channel. I know all of you are subscribed to his amazing YouTube channel. He's a wealth of knowledge. You could pretty much find the answer to any question you're looking for if you just go to his YouTube channel and type in whatever uh, health challenge you're having or symptom. He's going to have a video that's going to be an incredible video done for you. Uh, he's an authority in the space. Uh, it's interesting because I've inter I have over 700 interviews on my Keto Camp podcast, and I've interviewed hundreds of people, but I have yet to interview this legend. And today, right now, is the day to actually interview him. So let me just read his quick bio. I don't think I need to because all of you know who he is, but God graduated from chiropractic, pra chiropractic school. He is known as the Knowledge Doc. His main passion has been and continues to be teaching people about health-related topics, including healthy keto, intermittent fasting as a basic long-term eating plan. He loves dissecting complex health problems and breaking them down so they're easy to understand, connecting symptoms to the real cause. He has a great book that's an Amazon bestseller called The Healthy Keto Plan. 30 years of practice. You're talking about somebody who has a whole bunch of knowledge and experience. So, Without further ado, let me bring on Dr. Eric Berg. Hello. Hey, thanks, Ben. And I will give you that $20. I'll send that to the mail. Okay. So I appreciate <laughs> it. Meant every word. Uh, you've been a huge inspiration. And I'm, I'm personally very excited to have this conversation with you. We've been chatting on and off, uh, offline here and there the last few weeks. And there's a very important topic we're going to discuss later on. But here's where I want to start, Dr. Berg. Mm -hmm. Ketosis, uh, such an incredible tool, right? A metabolic process that we are all designed to utilize. Essentially, what we see out there with uh, metabolic syndrome, they're in this keto deficiency. They've forgotten how to burn fat. A lot of people, including those here on the uh, Five Day Keto Challenge, are, are discovering keto or coming to keto because they want to lose weight. Mm -hmm. And I want you to share a little bit how the body loses weight, how we're not really focused on the weight loss. And some of the ways keto could help with weight loss, which is outside the scope of just cutting your calories. So how does keto help with weight loss and why is not why is it not the main focus of keto? Because um, the ability to um, use your stored energy is a natural thing. I mean, our bodies were designed to store fat to survive and we wouldn't have survived if we didn't tap into these ketones. So sometimes people think that ketones are a secondary source of fuel and the primary is glucose. But if that was the case, um, where was the glucose available long ago when our bodies were developing? It's uh, so uh, keto is a natural uh, <clears throat> uh, phase of just survival. And when you burn ketones, you burn uh, a cleaner fuel. It's the backup storage and uh, um, an average person that's not overweight has like over a hundred thousand calories of this stored fat. Yet nowadays, <clears throat> because um, there's so many other foods available, uh, we have not been using this ketone backup storage. And ketones are basically just kind of packaged, easy to use fats. 
So that's what a ketone is. So um, when you're when you go between one meal to the next, um, it's not that your body is starving. Your body is using your fat if you're in ketosis. If you're not adapted to ketosis, then you're now you're kind of locked into this sugar thing. You have to. You're going to be hungry. You're going to get a quick snack to feel your body, which you know it's it's got into us. It got us into a lot of problems from this uh, available food. It's everywhere, and uh, that's how we developed all these news diseases. It comes directly from this, what we eat. Unfortunately, the availability of food is at the top of the list. It's it's a problem. It's a big problem. That's why we see 88 to 93% of American adults that are metabolically unhealthy. They're, what, we, what we're describing is somebody's metabolically inflexible. They're stuck burning glucose and mm -hmm. sugar. They're not accessing their fat stores and their livers, not using ketones or producing ketones, I should say. What um what is the optimal amount of glucose of sugar in the bloodstream for the body to be considered an optimal state? You, you see a lot of people eating a lot of sugar, but when they sometimes test their blood sugars, it's normal. You know, eighty milliliters per deciliter or milligrams per deciliter. So um, that would be normal. Um, so how does someone get away with eating all these sugars yet have normal blood sugars? Our, our bodies quickly are getting rid of the sugar as fast as it goes in and putting it into storage. Uh, so the amount of sugar that is normal for every for any given period of time is a very small amount. So if we take a look at what 80 milligrams per deciliter really comes down to, it's like a teaspoon of sugar in our blood at any one time. So that right there tells us our body does not uh, like a lot of sugar. And so it has all these protective mechanisms. Number one, we have insulin to push it out fast. Number two, we develop even insulin resistance to protect it from going too far in our cells. But with that comes with a package because eventually uh, you lose the mechanism to the point where you can no longer get the sugar out of the blood. So the sugar raises and you are now a diabetic. But don't worry, there's a medication for that. You can take a medication to keep it under control. But is that really solving the problem? It's just taking one problem and pushing it somewhere else. I mean, the sugar has to go somewhere. So that medication just drives it in other places in the body. Yeah, that's that's the issue, right? Because it's focused on the, the symptoms, which is the high blood sugar levels, but it's not getting to the cause. And there's different medications, some that shove it to different cells, some that force the kidneys to get rid of it. But it, either way, it's not getting to the cause. The question is, okay, what has caused my body to have excessive levels of glucose and insulin and that that'll get you to the where you want to go so when we eat a keto diet which we like to call more of a lifestyle right your body's going to naturally lower those glucose and insulin levels because fat let me ask you this actually i'll ask you the question the three macronutrients dr berg carbohydrates protein and fat could you explain the glucose and insulin response from each of those macronutrients yeah, the, um, the fat, it, you don't get much uh, insulin response at all. Now, when you actually eat fat and it goes down into your small intestine, there's another way that it may increase insulin a little bit. And this is why um, eating in general will increase insulin. But typically, if you compare fat to sugar, it's, it's completely apples and oranges. Uh, fat does not raise um, insulin hardly at all. Now, protein does to a certain degree if you're eating a lot of protein. But at the same time, we have another hormone release with this insulin, and that's called glucagon. It sounds like glucose, but it's not. It's a hormone that um, kind of opposes insulin. So even though with uh, protein, you're increasing insulin, you're also triggering this other hormone, which does kind of buffer some of the bad effects of insulin. Yeah, well said there. And with the weight loss part of ketosis, you know, we're going to naturally lower insulin. We know insulin is this energy sensor. It's a fat storage hormone amongst other things. So that is one mechanism that we achieve weight loss on keto because we're getting more of this hormone insulin, more sensitive to connect to the receptor sites and do its job. What about the ATP production, the cellular energy that's produced when we're using ketones, the signaling molecule. Is that another way for us to raise our basal metabolic rate and actually lose weight on keto too? So, so when you uh, compare um, running your body on sugar versus running your body on ketones or fat, um, there's, uh, there's this little energy factory called the mitochondria and it deals with this energy and you make the energy currency called ATP, right? Well, um, the sugar pathways, the biochemistry with sugar 
are basically come come in before it even hits the mitochondria. <laughs> it's called glycolysis. That's on the, in the outside of the mitochondria. That's actually inside the cell, but it's not inside the mitochondria. So if you're eating a lot of sugar, you're producing your ATP, not even utilizing hardly any of the mitochondria. And that motor is very, very inefficient. So you waste a lot of energy. So when you switch over and don't rely on this, it's called glycolysis where there's sugar burning. Now we get to use, use the mitochondria and that, that um, motor is going to generate a lot more energy or ATP if you compare the two. And so you're going to have more energy. And this is why so many people, when they get on keto, they're like, wow, I have this sudden burst of energy. Where's this coming from? Right. Um, and then as they he heal the mitochondria, because you're not adding all the sugar, because see, sugar destroys the mitochondria. It just, just tanks it because when you, when you uh, burn sugar, you have all this, what's called oxidation, which is like rusting out. And so you create all this oxidation, creates damage, inflammation, and, and gunks up the mitochondria and uh, creates disease. So what you're doing with ketones is you're you're funneling through this energy, you're creating more ATP, more energy, less inflammation, you feel better, and most diseases are related to mitochondria. So you're basically gonna avoid a lot of different health problems if you just did that. It's a clean source of energy, you get more energy produced. I mean, it sounds like a win, 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 win to me uh, using these ketone molecules that we're all designed to utilize. When it comes to inflammation, uh, on Monday session, session one, I went over, chronic inflammation versus acute inflammation and kind of explained the differences there. I'd love to, I'd love for you to share more about chronic inflammation as it relates to the membrane getting inflamed and those integral membrane proteins getting inflamed and what that does to create symptoms in the body. And then how keto, a clean, clean, healthy keto could help with uh, lowering cell inflammation. Yeah. So uh, when we're talk talking about this uh, inflammation, we're talking about it's, it's related to the immune response. And, uh, there's many different triggers of inflammation. And by the way, inflammation is part of the healing process. And so when the body starts to use its various defense mechanisms against like an infection, there's more inflammation in there. And then what's supposed to happen next is uh, the body comes in there with all this blood and heals the area and then everything's fine, right? That's called an acute inflammation cycle and then it gets better. But what happens when you're constantly... Um, being activated by certain bad foods, right? Which create inflammation like seed oils and refined starches and sugar in your gut. So now we have this long-term infl inflammatory that it never is able to heal. And uh, it creates what's called a lot of collateral damage. So here your immune system comes in there, tries to heal, but it can't. So you develop a, a lot of um, scar tissue in the gut. You develop holes in the gut. And now we have a direct entry into the body, no immigration stamp of approval, and now we have these immune reactions. So we're dealing now with a lot of autoimmune diseases that are originated from a leaky gut. And uh, so when someone has like a, a thyroid autoimmune or a brain autoimmune or a joint, it's not really a problem in those areas. It's, it's an immune problem that is being triggered by something that originated in the gut. So um, if you take a look at, um, what you can do to resolve that, you know, you just get on a good ketogenic diet, get off the sugars and now instantly your inflammation drops. I'll, I'll tell you, like when I was, um, actually my early twenties, you know, two years ago, um, <laughs> I developed a tremendous amount of inflammation in my hands, my back. I was like, what's going on? I'm like 28 years old. I have, I have like inflammation all over the place. Where's this coming from? And so uh, I had no awareness that it was coming from my diet as I was eating one of those very long submarine sandwiches and mm -hmm. just eating all, all these processed foods. So cereals. So it wasn't until um, I stumbled on the ketogenic diet that um, like I just, I just switched my breakfast meal for uh, meat. And it was like someone took a helmet off my head. I was just like, I felt like clear all the inflammation start going away i'm like you got to be kidding i was just blown away at the dramatic effect um so i think a lot of people have inflammation 
they're, they're covering up with medications, but they don't realize most of it's coming from food. Now, there's a lot of other aspects to inflammation. You have, um, you know, a problem with cortisol, which is dealing with stress, or you also have an infection, you have too much iron, you have um, toxins, you have um, a lack of antioxidants because you're eating just like crap food and it's dead. So there's many different aspects to this, but typically if you look at the, if you're talking about the mitochondria, uh, you're talking about creating a lot of free radical damage with sugar, free radical damage. If you picture like, I don't know, like a plate spinning around with these balance weights on it, and then you take one off, now we have this out of balance. It's called an unpaired electron. So you have these electrons that are supposed to be balancing. And so then and, and an accident donates electron and stabilizes it. So um, our bodies make antioxidants and we get them from food. And so if the mitochondria has depleted its antioxidants because you're eating just junk food, now we don't get that healing. Now we get this massive cascade of oxidative stress, which is basically too much um, free radical damage with not enough antioxidants. Um, and then we start going downhill. But I do want to mention one thing because um, I, I, I live on a farm and I entered my, my beef into an, ex, an experiment, a study that they compared grass-fed, grass-finished uh, products to grain-fed. And about six months after this experiment, the researcher called me up and says, what the heck are you doing? I said, what do you mean? He goes, look at, the, look at this graph. Um, apparently, the, the cattle that I was raising have three times as much phytonutrients that's plant-based chemicals than any other farm in the United States. So that's interesting. Like what is a plant-based nutrient, phytonutrient, an antioxidant doing in beef? Well, it's because it's what the animal eats. If you, the animal eats grains, just like humans eat grains, they're going to get, they're not going to get those phytonutrients nearly as much. So with my animals, they have no choice but to eat all the, the weeds, the grass. So this is another factor. If you're consuming grains, okay, you're not consuming like actual vegetables or you're consuming um, seed oils or you're consuming animals who eat grains, you're going to be heavy on that inflammatory cycle because you're not going to be able to develop as, as many of these phytonutrients that could also come from your meat. This is, explains why like a, a carnivore can be successful if they do it right too. So anyway, it's interesting. Very interesting. And I have some thoughts I'm going to share with you with the, I just did a 90 day carnivore experiment, but I want to ask a couple of questions before I get to that. And then we're going to get into a very important topic um, as well. And then minerals, minerals, minerals. You hear a lot of people out there speaking about the benefits of taking minerals. And it is important because in this day and age, our crops, our fruits and our vegetables, they are depleted of minerals. The crops we have today are very different than the crops we had 10, 20, 30 years ago. And if you're doing a low carbohydrate, keto, carnivore diet with fasting, this is especially important for you because what happens when you lower insulin on these diets and fasting, you're gonna shed a lot of extra water weight, body water weight, which is great. You're gonna feel lighter, look lighter, but the problem is that your kidneys kind of go through this diuresis process where it sheds minerals and electrolytes. So you've heard of the keto flu, you've heard of symptoms doing keto and fasting, people just don't feel good sometimes. This is the number one reason why. So my go-to for replenishing my electrolytes and my minerals, for enhancing my immune system, for gut support, for detoxification, is bean minerals. I love bean minerals because it's simply a liquid I drink every day. It doesn't taste like anything, it tastes like water. And I know I'm replenishing those electrolytes and those minerals. As a matter of fact, it has fulvic and humic compounds and these have over 70 trace minerals and really important electrolytes to replenish your body with. They have these incredible sprays that I take with me when I play basketball, when I'm on the go. If you have muscle cramps, you spray this directly. They're called the Instalite spray. There's also the capsules that I take with me when I travel, the Electro Boost capsules that I take with me to make sure when I'm traveling, I'm supporting the immune system and I'm staying hydrated and my minerals are being replenished. Check out Bean Minerals over at beanminerals.com. 
Use the coupon code Azadi, my last name, at checkout to get a nice discount. That is A-Z-A-D-I at checkout over at beamminerals.com. I asked Dr. Kate Shanahan this question a year ago or two years ago. I asked her about seed oils. I asked her about cigarette smoking and sugar. I said, which one's worse for you? Smoking cigarettes every day, eating processed sugar every day, or consuming these adulterated seed oils every day? And I want to ask you the same question. I know they're all bad, but if you had to choose one, Dr. Berg, which one of those scenarios would be the worst? These are all really good questions because you want to know the relative value. You want to know what's worse, right? Because everything is not the same because they kind of lump in together. Oh yeah, red meat is just as bad as processed meat. Really? Really? Where did you get that from, right? So if you take a look at all those three examples, um, I think um, the, the seed oils are the worst. And, and that the reason is because um, they accumulate in the body, whereas mm -hmm. sugars don't as much, okay? So so you have this situation, um, seed oils have a half-life of two and a half to three years. Yeah. So if they embed into your cell membranes and they're stuck there, you got to wait several years before they come out. Now, what's interesting about smoking is uh, the, the, the island off the coast of um, Italy, um, it's called Sardinia. You have cultures that have live a long life and they're in the top of the mountains not the ones in the bottom but ones that live on top of the mountains did you realize that the, the men that live very long smoke they're smoke fiends so what's up with that how can that be um how could they survive well apparently nicotine is a plant-based chemical mm -hmm. and uh, it does have some positive health benefits could be an antioxidant or something yeah. so they consume a lot of cheese from goats that that eat grass at high altitudes. So guess what they're getting? They're getting massive amounts of phytonutrients, which are the antioxidants, to counter some of the bad effects. Now, I live um, in the south part of Virginia, right? It's kind of southern a bit, and um, a lot of open land. A lot of people live on junk food. Um, a lot of farmers chew tobacco, smoke like fiends, eat terrible food, but they seem to live a long life. And I'm like, what the heck is going on here? Well, they're outside all day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're working. They get this exercise. So they're actually regenerating their mitochondria. They're actually getting a lot of oxygen. They're burning off a lot of their junk food. So uh, in reality, you got to look at the whole picture and it's not just about your foods. It's like, What's your, what's your lifestyle? Do you have things to counteract these other things? Do you have any accidents? So that's just kind of like shifted my viewpoint on, you know, of course, if they didn't do those things, they'd probably do a lot better. And they, they still have problems, but they, you would think they'd be doing a lot worse. So there's other things that can counter that. Your food, exercise, your environment, uh, your attitude. You know, there's some other things that are pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah, I love it. definitely attitude mindset is a big part there that I focus on as well. You make a good point. You know, the linoleic acid from seed oils, 680 days is uh, the half-life. So about two years or so, it accumulates in the body, creates inflammation. What are some ways that we could accelerate the body's ability to remove these damaged fats from our body? Uh, vitamin E, fasting, are there any mechanisms, things we can do for that? If we take a look at the chemistry of the omega-6 seed oils, and omega-3, they both share um, the same enzyme. So they're competitive. So if you're doing the seed oils and the omega-3 at the same time, they kind of cancel each other out. So what you want to do is you want to start beefing up, no pun intended, your omega-3, okay? And getting rid of the omega-6. Uh, but for that enzyme to work, there are various cofactors that a lot of people don't know about. You have magnesium, you have zinc, the B vitamins. So you need those two to make everything work. But there's also one other very interesting cofactor, and that's insulin. Mm. So people that have insulin resistance, uh, what happens is they, they have even more problems with this seed oil than people that don't. So how can you improve this situation? Get on keto. So that'll speed up the the progressive damage from the seed oils 
It'll um, allow you to cope with them much better. So um, yeah, that's that's one one area right there that you can do. It's really good. I want to share with you my carnivore experiment. Um, I'm about to record a video and a podcast. Uh, I'm still waiting for most of my results to get, come in, but I'll share with you, Dr. Berg. Uh, on October 1st of 2023, I said, I'm going to do 30 days of just eating meat, eggs, and some seafood, so carnivore. And then after 30 days, I'm going to see how I feel from day one to day 30. But also on day one, uh, I did a $3,500 LabCorp panel. So I got all these inflammatory markers done, C-reactive protein, homocysteine, fibrinogen, complete thyroid panel, LDL, LDL particles. So I did a whole bunch of panels on day one, did a stool test on day one to see my diversity in different bacteria, put on a continuous glucose monitor day one. And then I hit day 30 and I was feeling so good that I kept just going and I went 90 days and I just broke it last week. So right before I broke it, I did the same test, the blood panel test. I did the same stool test. And I'm looking at like my deep sleep and REM sleep via my aura ring and kind of comparing. I'm still waiting for my stool test results, but I got my results back from my blood work. And some of the interesting things that I want to share and hear your feedback, and please, for those watching and listening, none of this is medical advice, so don't take it as such. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of the things that I noticed, like if, if a regular cardiologist would have looked at my labs, they would have freaked out. They would be putting me on a statin, telling me I'm about to have a, have a heart attack because my LDL total went from, I think it was 160 on day one, which is already high, they would consider, to 350. My total cholesterol went from right under 300 to over 400. My triglycerides were in the 60s on day one, stayed in the 60s on day 90. But here's the thing. My particle sizes for the LDL, the small particle, which is the, the, the nasty kind, the B pattern that we want to avoid, was less than 400. It was a really small amount. The majority of my LDL was the large and fluffy pattern A. Mm -hmm. So the small amount was really minimal. Large amount was high. And then my, all of my inflammatory markers were really low, like 0.5 C-reactive protein. Homocysteine was in the uh, nines, I believe. So with all of that data, <laughs> what would you? Uh, what are your thoughts on that right there as it regards in regards to cholesterol, the lipids I just shared, and heart disease? So probably out of... All the things about keto, there's one area that is the most confusing, and that has to do with uh, LDL, right? Would you agree with that? So this yes. LDL confusion, because you got uh, all these vegan doctors saying, oh my gosh, you're going to die. And then you got cardiologists who are keto friendly, and they're like, no, no, it's fine. So there's this big, huge confusion because we're, we're debating um, what and it, and as soon as you get into this topic, you give people all these big words and they just go to sleep. They don't even know who to believe. So they're like, now I'm more confused. So let's just kind of take this apart because do it. Um, uh, I, I had this uh, MD PhD fact check me, and he wanted to correct me on my LDLs. And he said, well, you know, a lot of people make this mistake, and uh, you know, I'm a researcher. Of course, he never practiced in clinic. Um, you know, he says, oh yeah, the uh, <laughs> the small dense, the small dense particles because there's different types of LDL. And uh, the small dense, uh, you know, there's no difference between the large buoyant and the small dense, blah, blah, blah. So um, I, did a, I did a whole fact checking the fact checker on him. Um, <laughs> so just because he got a million views. And, uh, but there's one thing about that video that just raised a red flag. He, when he would talk about something, he would say, well, you know, when we evaluated this and like, when we, I thought that you're a one man band, right? They kept using the word we. So I'm like, what is this we? So then I kind of pull a string and, and see who's behind this guy. And I find that who, what organization he is from. And it's, a, it's an organization that's really there. They're about um, fighting disinformation, uh, mm. fake facts combating false doubts, like all this stuff. Um, basically, they want to keep things status quo, support the narrative where you have general medical consensus and the whole thing. So there's a whole team of these guys doing this. So um, they want to maintain this a viewpoint that fat is bad, saturated fat is bad. And what you should do is start eating more grains. And, and connected to that, and we'll get into this in a little bit, is... Yeah this whole push for um, lab-based meats and fake meats, right? And going away from meat. 
So there's a bit of connection with that. But that being said, um, if you have um, small amounts of the small dense LDL versus the large buoyant, um, it's much less pathogenic. You cannot tr you know, look at a patient and treat one biomarker. So, oh yeah, let's just put you on statins or let's put you on this because you have this one biomarker. Why don't you treat the patient and look at the whole thing? You have low anti-inflammatory, you have low anti-inflammatory markers. Um, I mean, high anti-inflammatory markers, I think you said, and you have, there's not a lot of inflammation in your body. Well, that right there tells, gives me a lot of great data. There is um, some new information I want to share with you that I think is going to be the, the medicine of the future because what we really have right now is what you said. We have these different lab panels. We can look at this and look at that. There's something new, and I don't know if you've heard about this, but it's called metabolomics. Have you ever heard of that word? Yeah, share it, share more. Okay, metabolomics is going to be the new healthcare. And what that is, it's you do this test and you look at everything inside your body. So now we, we go from like maybe 60 things to maybe 5,000 things. So now we get all the data and we look at what's happening with your biochemistry and all the different pathways. You can look right into the mitochondria and see the different steps. There's Very different, cool. it's called metabolites and, and see what's happening, where your problem is. That is going to finally show people what's really going on because see what you did, which is great. You did it before and after, and then you'll continue to do it and you can see things improving. If you can look at your metabolomic testing, one of the most powerful um, ways to uh, risk factors for cardiovascular disease from LDL to triglycerides to you know HTL to all these factors is something called and this might be new for some people, uh, lipoprotein insulin resistance. Lipoprotein, which is basically that, that particle that's carrying the cholesterol, insulin resistance. So here we come full circle back to insulin resistance. That is by far mm -hmm. the most important biomarker for cardiovascular disease because with that, you get you know oxidized LDL, you get oxidation, you get inflammation. So you just basically went zero carb. So your inflammation just went bye-bye. Yeah, my fasting yeah. insulin was 3.1. Okay. So you have nothing to worry about. I mean, you're doing great. So, um, but I think this, this new testing is going to finally um, allow people to, you know, because it's not about, it's really hard to design a study that proves something for sure especially right now, they're using all these observational studies. Mm -hmm. But if you could do a study that's like you did, like a individual personalized study and see what's best for you to see if that diet works for you um, individually and see things improve or worsen. I mean, that is the wave of the future because that way, I mean, you get so many variables and so many differences. How can you lump everyone into the same thing and say, everyone needs this one diet? You can't. That's such valuable advice right there. You know, there's, that's the way to go about it. You have a thesis, an idea. I think this diet, I think this approach is going to work for me. And then you gather data on the opposite that goes against that, the antithesis. And then you do both maybe. And then you form your synthesis and you use labs, how you feel as a way to form that synthesis. And that's going to be unique to you with this experiment. One of the things I'm going to also do before I make the video I'm going to go get a coronary uh, artery score done, a, a scan, right? To see if there's any calcified plaque in my arteries, right? Because I think a lot of people are going to hear me share how high my LDL and cholesterol went up. And they're going to be uh, concerned, thinking that I'm at risk, right? So I want to make the point the way that you make the point very well, that just because some of these markers are high doesn't really give you the full picture. So I'm going to do my own experiment myself to encourage others to do the same thing. And then you could form that unique approach that will work for you. I can tell you this. I felt incredible during those 90 days. I got more deep sleep, REM sleep. I lost 16 pounds, 6% 6 body fat off my body, less awake time looking at my aura ring score. So I felt absolutely incredible. And the labs actually backed up how I felt too. So I just want to mention one thing you said about that, because I think this is really, really important. If you ask the average person, like, what, what's the function of LDL? They're going to say, well, that's bad cholesterol. That's yeah. Their function is to clog your arteries. But- the function of LDL, if you just look look up any 
you know, physiology book, um, is this, it delivers cholesterol to the different places in your body. So the purpose of cholesterol is to help you make vitamin D, <laughs> help you make bile, help you make the cell membranes and help all of your steroids being created. I'm talking about cortisol, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, all of these hormones. You can't make them without, without cholesterol. So that cholesterol has to be transported to the tissues. How does that, how is that transported? Through LDL. So LDL is part of the healing process. You want your LDL to go up while you're healing to deliver the cholesterol to make more of these factors that now are going to help you. So what about that function? You know, like, should we, why don't we just, um, like some doctors uh, say, oh yeah, let's, let's put statins in our, our, our water supply so everyone can bring their cholesterol down to zero. So what, we can't make hormones anymore? They can't make cell membranes, no vitamin D, no bile. Like it's just, it's, it's either some of these people are paid to say that or they're just idiots because it doesn't make sense. It's, it's illogical. Yeah. Or they're both paid and idiots. Yeah. You know, I, I used to be, I'm, I'm a very optimistic person. I always try to look at the bright side and, and see the good in things. And that's just how I am naturally. Um, but it's, it's just been so obvious the last few years, how there is an agenda the writing is on the wall when you look for it. And one of the things that I want to transition to is one of these main agendas that's happening in the world right now. This is actually how me and Dr. Burke connected. I'll just share the backstory. You emailed me a few months ago uh, and Alina actually forwarded me the email. Uh, and I was like, is it actually Dr. Berg? I'm not sure if it is, but let's uh, give him a Zoom link and see if it is. And actually it was you. And then we had this conversation about the, the censorship happening against keto. And I want you to take a deep dive into what you've seen, what's happening, and what we can do to support the movement. Because we have a few hundred people live here, and then we'll have an additional 1,000, 2,000 plus watching this, plus we'll repurpose this all over the place. So we could develop a good movement here for the cause. So what are we seeing out there? What's happening? And what can we do, Dr. Berg? Well, so, so they had this uh, new policy. Uh, this is back in, I think they did this in May, where they're introduced a uh, health health policy to prevent misinformation. And so they used the whole COVID thing and then they branched off into pretty much everything like diets and things like that. So when you type now alternative uh, remedies, home remedies, various diets, what comes up is uh, the authorities, the health sources and they're mainly medical. And when you type in low carb or keto, you see the opposition, <laughs> the competitors for keto. You see some, all these vegan people, or maybe some YouTubers that try the diet, but they're not experts. So I have just under a um, thousand, I think I have 980 something videos on keto. Um, I'm not, I'm no longer ranking for keto. So um, some people say, well, you just did that video just to get attention. I'm like, uh, really? Well, we'll take a look, try to find me, <laughs> try, just type keto and see what happens, right? So um, there is a bit of censoring right now. Um, but what's interesting about this, like if you type keto in general, boy, you hear so many bad things, right? I don't, if, if, I don't know if you've seen that. It's like keto causes bad breath, ketoacidosis, it's linked to heart disease and kidney stones and keto crotch. I'm like, yeah. wait a second, I've never had any patient ever even complained about that. Um, so the list goes on and on and on. And then some doctors say, oh, keto kills you. So what's happening, and this this is kind of what the tobacco industry used to use is they put doubt in people's mind. That's all I have to do is put doubt. A hundred percent of these studies are observational, used in questionnaires. So with the it, they're being used for one primary purpose um, because no one would create a study on that other than just to put some doubt into this ketogenic diet, like, like what is so dangerous about the ketogenic diet? Because um, this is a classic disinformation campaign to get rid of keto. So what don't people, certain people like about keto? Well, it's against junk food. It's against ultra processed food. It's against sugar. Is that a big industry? Could be. Well, they're against, uh, I mean, these, they're, they're against like, um, we're against, um, you know, we want, we're, we're pro, uh, meat, 
right? And eggs. So yes, there's a, there's a bunch of angry vegans out there that are like, you know, are attacking us, but there's something a little bit bigger than that because it's almost too organized to the point where all of a sudden, like every news channel has this same mantra. Oh yeah. Keto has just been found to cause insulin resistance. I'm like, and then you read the article, which no one reads the article. When you read the article or the study, it's not even the ketogenic diet. The carbohydrates are like 45%. So, so again, this is meant to um, use propaganda. And, uh, you know, the use of disinformation has been going on for thousands of years. Even like Sun Tzu uh, had five agents. And one agent was called a dead agent, which they spread disinformation. And they called it a dead agent because once anyone found out about it, like the opposing side, they would kill this agent. So, so what's happening now um, is that um, a lot of people are trying to give keto a black eye. So I started to look at this and like, where is this going? And literally, it'll make you dizzy by just find, finding out the connections or who's connected to this and that. I'm going to avoid all that. Um, and just kind of get to some interesting things because um, if you take a look at some of the sites, the vegan sites, the plant-based sites, um, their whole mission is not to promote veganism. It's to promote, to attack fake facts, uh, which I find interesting. Why would you actually have your mission to fight fake facts when you're not even promoting your own veganism? You're just going to fight facts. So what, what, what do you talk about fake facts? What does that mean? It's misinformation. Well, what's misinformation? Well, anything that opposes, um, you know, eating grains. And so if <laughs> just so happens that, especially me, I'm like right in the middle, like I'm promoting red meat as being a healing thing, right? And, uh, and so are you. It's like, it's a great thing. So we're right in the middle of this, this attack that's like, so you can attack the food all day, but then you attack the, the source of who's putting that out. And then what's another thing that's really interesting is if you type in on Google, uh, in, incognito, so you, you don't get your history, type red meat. Guess who comes up? Me. I was like, what? How did I get through the gray find on that one? Now, that'll, that'll pro that's probably just a mistake, but uh, they, they listed the top two or three of my videos on red meat being the healing source of the mm. body, and they just put that right up there. I think it was kind of a some mistake that they made but keto no no but i i you know of course because i'm i'm out there talking about the benefits of meat and eggs and stuff like that i'm a, definitely a target so if you pull a string and see where these organizations or front groups who's behind them you have it links to um what's called this new uh planetary health diet planetary healthy diet right i think it's by the Eat Lancet Commission, whatever, you know, it's just this uh, other group. Um, and if you look into their uh, site, they have, I think it's uh, over 20 um, junk food industry uh, companies. Uh, I don't know how many pharmaceutical industries are sponsoring them. Uh, the strategic partner is Nestle, who basically, from my viewpoint, is probably the most evil company in the planet, worse than Monsanto, because... If you think about it, they sell, they're the largest company that sells junk food, okay, the in the world. Can you think, Ben, can you think of any other, anything that causes more illness or chronic disease than ultra processed calories or, or junk food? No, because it's going to have processed sugar and seed oil is the two things we want to avoid the most. Right. So, I mean, people say, well, why do people die? Or are they, Well, you got... Well, it's because of heart disease. Okay, we'll cause heart disease. Oh, obesity. What causes obesity? Um, genetics. <laughs> right. What, what about junk food? Yeah, junk food is really the, the primary thing, right? I, I don't know of anything worse than junk food. I mean, when you think about it. So here you have this company who sells the very reason why people are getting chronically sick, now partnering with this new health diet. Like that is just, what is... What's wrong with that picture? That's like, what's the elephant in the room here? This is so obvious that this is an agenda. And then you find out that not only Nestle and 
these other large companies, and they're huge. They're all uh, now producing or, or researching uh, lab-based meats, alternative proteins. And so there's a tremendous amount of money, even governmental money being put uh, to, to push this lab-based meat, which will, and they have a big problem because right now the demand for lab meat or fake meat is not very high. So they have to create the demand. They're not going into an already existing demand. So to create the demand is really hard. So how do you create a demand? Do you promote the benefits of it? No. Well, they can't because there's not a lot of benefits to it. So they're using climate change, right? And then what they're going to use is the fear tactics that if we don't do this, then the planet is going to be extinct. And this is, if you look at like, I think it's called Reboot Food and a couple uh, additional sites, it's talking about mass extinction because of the cows, the cow burps, right? Yeah, the cow farts and burps, yep. Yeah, so that's what they're going to use. It's good for the environment. They call it clean meat when it's not clean. It's in vats. And they want to, what's called rewild the forests. So basically they'll pay the farmer not to farm and then just basically take away their land and just, um, you know, grow the woods. So um, the problem is like, I have no problem with you making, you know, artificial meats or lab meats, but when you start to then say that other people, you know, shouldn't be consuming meat because it's unhealthy, that's where I have a problem, a big problem, because you can eat what you want, but let me keep eating meat, you know, because they, they want to use uh, a bit of force authority to try to push this agenda. So they're, and they're talking about like, even on the planetary health diet, they want to tax people. They want to use government to help, you know, enforce this viewpoint that everyone should be on this diet. And I think you probably already know what the diet is. It's like 80% grains, seed oils, like you can prison food. And half teaspoons of sugar and hardly any meat at all. So they call it a flexitarian diet, um, which is a combination between kind of like a, it's kind of like dirty veganism. So you can do junk foods. And so the point is that there's big money behind this. They want more control. It's like four companies that like are going to own most of it. And um, unfortunately, the, the people are in the middle are the farmer. You know, these farmers yeah. are having a hard time. So that's what's really going on. And this whole attack against keto really comes down to one thing. Keto works. And because it works so well, you know, what does it work against? It works, it helps people get off medications. It helps get people to not buy junk food and sugars. So of course, the largest pasta company in the world um, got together with Nestle. I don't know what year this was, but they had a meeting and I, I, I read this and it was like, uh, we have a problem. The low carb movement is really, a, could threaten our existence. So we got to do something. So I wonder what they did, what they planned. Well, I can see what they did. But um, the point is that um, this is, um, there's a big problem. They have to scare people. But I think uh, people have already, they're not, they've already, they haven't drunk the Kool-Aid. They're going to, it's going to be really hard to force, at least in America, in other parts of the country to force people to eat this lab-based meat based on this, this big lie. And I think um, one of the solutions, the big solution is to um, this metabolomic testing because with me metabolomics, you can actually assess, um, you can go beyond the label and, and beyond these macronutrients and look at all these biomarkers actually in the health of that animal and then compare it to the lab meats and also the lab milk. There's mm. a friend of mine, a Yum. PhD in, um, he had his own lab and he measured one of the lab based milks recently compared it to real milk. There's like 97 unknown proteins. Like he didn't even match, match any of the things in the, in this library of over a hundred thousand different proteins. And he's like, this, went right through with no safety studies. Like we're introducing something that has never been introduced in mankind ever before. So the, 
When you have a, if you're in a business and you have a, a new idea, what you should do is pilot it first on a small scale to see if it's going to work before you invest billions. Um, I can't see this being successful because they're spending a lot of money on this new agenda, hoping it works using a lot of mandates that I think is just going to piss people off. So metabolomics, metabolomics testing is going to work. And also with our in, individual bodies, if we, instead of relying on a study, just get your own test done by yourself on your own body and see how that, that works for you. If you want to do a, a lab-based ultra processed food diet, try that and then compare the results. I mean, that's really going to be, I think, um, the ultimate, um, way to figure things out. Hey, I want to just briefly interrupt the video you're watching to share something with you. One of my favorite companies that I use for health and longevity and biohacking is a company called Bond Charge. And they have a whole range of incredible products, including the blue light blocking glasses you see me wear right now. But one of my favorite products from them is an infrared sauna blanket. That's right. Uh, you don't have to spend a ton of money investing in a sauna or spending so much time driving to a facility with the sauna they actually created a sauna blanket that you could use in the comfort of your own home and i use this all the time why would we want to even do a sauna well there's a lot of research and a lot of studies showing the benefits of infrared sauna the sauna blanket works by raising your heart rate to a workout or a training session so you burn more calories while you're actually lying down and relaxing. You could burn up to 600 calories in one single session. Also, it's gonna cause you to sweat. And one method of fleshing out toxins from your body is through sweat. There's also one of my favorite benefits, this endorphin release, endorphin rush you get from using a sauna blanket. And I, every time I get out of the sauna blanket, I feel like I just got a 60 minute massage and uh, that's because of the endorphin benefit from it so how this works differently than a regular sauna is that it works by using infrared light which heats the body directly rather than the air around you like a traditional sauna this means you get the same benefit at a lower heat so it's easy to set up it's super convenient 30 to 40 minutes uh will suffice in terms of the length of the sessions and you do that two to three times a week you're gonna feel amazing Add that to your keto fasting protocol and watch what it does for your results. You could do it while you watch TV. You could do it while you read a book. I do it while I listen to an audio book. So if you want to learn more about the Bond Charge products, including the sauna blanket, head over to bondcharge.com slash keto camp. And if you use the coupon code keto camp at checkout, you'll get 15% off your sauna blanket. And actually any of their products are 15% off with that code. Bond Charge hooked you up. So head over to that domain or click the link down below and go get your Bond Charge products. All right, let's get back to today's video. Yeah, and this is um, some somebody, some people on here are saying this is horrible. This is terrifying. This is news to them. Some of them have seen this uh, before, the writing on the wall. We, we, we see this, this new documentary that just came out on Netflix about you are what you eat, you know, <laughs> on the LDL thing, you know. So, so we're going to see more of these propaganda films out there. And it's important not to be fear mongered into making these rash decisions. Uh, lean into what Dr. Berg just said, be your own N of one, you know, conduct your own experiment. Like I just did. You have metabolomics that you could do some experiments and testing with what other things we can, what are some other things we can do, Dr. Berg to make sure we're doing our part, but also, you know, supporting the community, supporting the movement of keto, anything else that we can do that you would suggest for us? I think, um, I think we need to, um, we need to get a bit organized. These groups are highly organized, highly funded. Um, there is no real organized keto group. I mean, like big enough to, so I think we need to be organized. I think we also need to um, individually as a grassroots campaign, at the very minimum, increase awareness of what's what's going on the pike, what's happening. So just, just so people can be aware of this, because here's the thing, you can't, sell a product to someone if there's no demand a product goes into a demand it's, you can't force it in there it's not going to work if there's no demand and so the companies follow the market where the demand is so what i'm interested in doing is increasing demand for whole foods that actually are healthy for you and if we all do that at the same time doesn't matter if they put out a new lab-based meat. If no one buys it, then it doesn't go anywhere. So I think it's a grassroots campaign. That's really the bottom line. Um, 
it's it's what's I don't know of any other thing that's more powerful than the ketogenic diet than um, for your health. I mean, it's it's potent. It mm -hmm. solves a lot of problems. So it's a a deadly um, competitive thing that's uh, for the opposition. But right now you are in, you are sitting in a dif dif disinformation campaign and it's hitting you from all different sizes and sides. And there's front groups and there's, they have a lot of partners and um, it's interesting how they partner with every group you can imagine to, to appear to be really big and strong, but it's not based in any truth. The mm -hmm. amount of lies being pumped out is crazy. So especially on keto, I mean, it's like opposite day. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. I mean, we have a, 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 just under 8,000 success stories on our website of people like, how can you say that that keto doesn't work? Uh, it, it, it gets rid of all those problems that you're, um, you're telling it. So I think, again, how much money do some of these companies need to, need to make, really? I mean, is it all about just money? Like, why can't we get people healthy, you know? Yeah, I think it's a combination of money and control and who who knows whatever else. So that that agenda the the plan is by 2030 uh right for the global the population in the world to be eating a plant-based uh, and plant engineered meat by 2030 in about 6 years is that the goal? Their goal? Yeah, it's an ambitious goal. It's mm -hmm. a very ambitious goal and um you know, here's the thing. I know this group of people have been trying to they 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 have these huge goals but from my view from my experience just observing what they've done in the past they they never reach their goals because they're not based on really good intentions so um they create a lot of destruction and confusion and and problems you know just like just like any of the the things that were passed like what about thalidomide or des that was passed uh, some years ago where all of a sudden it got passed through the safety studies and and so many kids were deformed and things like that. And mothers with the DES like said, it was, oh, yeah, we'll get rid of your your miscarriage or your prevent miscarriages when it was found to cause miscarriages. And same thing with trans fats and then the cigarette smoking. It's one of those things where they get away with it, make a lot of money, and then they find out, oh, sorry, uh, it's, it's damaging. So again, um, I think there's, here's the really good, good news, just to give you some good news. Um, keto is still the most popular search diet. Okay. It is still, and even though you might hear otherwise, there's a tremendous amount of people that are doing it with great success, because here's the thing. Once you start, once you get success, you don't go back. Yeah. You don't go back. You can't because now, you know, it works. What are you going to, are they going to try to convince people to go start eating this other food? No, they're not going to do it. So anyway, I just wanted to make you aware. Um, and uh, we just need to get the word out and spread the word. And I think um, collectively um, through a grassroots campaign, we can change the market into a different direction and then, you know, have them produce healthier products. How about that? Yeah, I, I love the awareness that you're bringing here. So we all essentially vote with our fork where we put our dollars is where we make these decisions that influence whether or not they get away with this or not. Uh, you know, when I go to restaurants, I'm always asking the servers if they use seed oils and they usually do. And I'm telling them I'm allergic. I'm using actually a seed oil allergy card that I created <laughs> and uh, I don't take the hit. But if more people did that, then the reason these restaurants use seed oils is because they're cheap. And most people are actually requesting, oh, what's going on there? <laughs> most people are requesting, are not requesting to have their food cooked with other things. So the more we do this grass foods, uh, grassroots movement, you watch Dr. Berg's videos, uh, my videos, you share that with people, the more they're not going to get away with this. You know, I, I don't think they're ever going to get away with this. We have Dr. Berg here sharing the message. We have myself, we have this entire community and so many others out there. So we just have to do our part. And they'll never get away with this. Keto is such a healing tool. And what's different about keto versus other diets like a paleo diet or a vegan diet, keto is a metabolic process. It's something that we are designed to use. Uh, and we've been using this process since the dawn of humankind. So there's nothing new about keto. It's just nuanced or maybe new to some people. But it's a process we're designed to use. I'm going to bring on Gail here, who's a 
a student in our Keto Camp Academy. She's super excited to meet you and ask you a question. And if you're also a VIP student and you want to come on and ask Dr. Berg a question, we have him for a few more minutes. So Dr. Berg, are you good for, with me bringing on Gail? Okay. Sure. Here's Gail coming from Texas. Hey, Gail. Hi, Dr. Berg. So Hi. wonderful to meet you. Um, and thank you, Ben, for helping me achieve one thing that's been on my bucket list for a few years, and that was to be able to meet Dr. Berg and explain to him the just the amazing impact you have had on my life. Um, mm. And you've probably heard this a thousand times, but I'm going to say it anyway for all the um, people out there who you've impacted. Uh, five and a half years ago, I was morbidly obese, couldn't, couldn't walk, couldn't stand, unbelievable pain, um, thinking that my future was bleak and not, not knowing what to do about it. And a miracle led me to YouTube. And I first found Suzanne Ryan, who you're probably familiar with Keto Karma and her work. But soon after that, as I searched, and six years ago is a little different on the searches, I found you. And I am so grateful to have this opportunity to tell you that you had, you, you helped save my life. And I want to, to thank you for that. Sorry, I'm going to get a little emotional. Um, on this, your videos were so valuable to me in terms of learning. Um, I would, I did not have the support that I have now from Ben and his community. I was pretty much on my own and I would just every day try to, to search for more information um, to help me with this transition from, and I wanted to start a meeting as soon as, as, soon as I learned about keto. Um, and just at first it was the general keto information that you gave. Then it became helping me with my challenges, um, head cramps. You go to search, you told me to take magnesium. Thank you. Um, still do. Uh, the trying to get rid of snacking and you taught me and every time I wanted to snack in the back of my mind, I would think, you know, Dr. Berg said, if you snack, every time you put something in your mouth, you raise your insulin and that's not, that's going to store fat and that's not good for you. And I would not snack. And that's, and your video was how I gave up snacking just on and on the changes that you helped me make. And then, then it became about motivation on the days when I thought, I know this is working, but can I keep doing this? And I would just say, okay, every day you're going to go out and you're going to watch two Dr. Berg videos. Doesn't matter what they are, just watch them. And that will keep you learning and keep you going. And now when I talk to people about my transformation, they'll have in their notes, just go watch two Dr. Berg videos every day, help you learn and grow. Um, and now I tell them to go listen to a Ben podcast too. Um, back then that it was just, you kept me going. And since I've lost over 120 pounds, I have no inflammation, no pain. Um, my life, my future raising, uh, Ben's coaches are helping me get stronger. Um, I I'm looking forward to a future that I never would have had uh, without you. So I just, for everyone that's out there that doesn't get a chance to say thank you, thank you so much for what you do. Wow, thank you so much. I appreciate that very much. Gail, thank you for that share. You're beautiful. We love you. I do have a question. I do have a question real quick, Go though, ahead. if he still has time. Um, so a little bit, not a health question, because you've helped me with all of those all the time, um, but a little bit about, we have a lot of people on this call who are budding entrepreneurs, um, we have, you know, Coach John has a supplement business and coaching business. Um, Becky and Sherry are creating communities. Um, we have Susie who has a health food uh, snack company. Um, so many more. Monica building a coaching business in Bahamas. And you've been so successful for so long. Two things. Do you have any words of wisdom for how they can um, continue their success and grow their businesses in the health space first. But second, also, could you explain a little bit more about maybe the, some things that they could do to help um, in what you were talking about promoting getting away from this dis disinformation and how could they help this grassroots campaign spread for um, the things you talked about earlier in, in combating uh, these processed foods? 
Wow, you just, uh, you um, definitely are touching on something that, like my, you know, two things. One is, I think that my most successful action is just basically, you know, spending a lot of time figuring out how to help more people. And it's just how, how can I keep helping people in a big way, right? So I just, that's my, that's my pay. It's, uh, it's, it's like a therapy for myself because uh, I find when I'm not, this is why, this is what pissed me off about YouTube. Like recently is like, they're going to cut my ability to help. That really pisses me off. So that's how I'm going to, I'm going to overcome that. Believe me. So the point is that um, there's a tremendous amount of uh, benefit <laughs> to me helping you and other people. So I, I just, I'm always figuring out ways to help. And that's why even like this next year is like, how can I even help people more? So we, we are going to gather this group. And um, so stay tuned for more information and um, get more organized, have more collaboration, um, create more resources to give to people like you and others so you can get the word out more and help more. And I, I want to even do seminars on teaching people how to help more and teaching people how to teach. So like, for example, when you go, see, when you go to school, even like when, when I went to school, I, I went through pre-med first and then I went through chiropractic college. There's, there's not enough um, time to actually learn anything. You just have to memorize, take the test and get through it. And then you graduate and then you try to figure it out after you graduate. You don't, to learn something, you have to be able to look at the information, play with it, understand it, apply it versus just memorize it. So I think with, um, when you teach people, you know, you should, the best thing is to, not to, it's, see, this learning really comes from, um, it's, it has to be self-determined. It has to come from with you. It can't. Knowledge can't be forced. Like even when I, when I come home and I'll tell my wife this great, amazing thing I learned, she doesn't have this aha moment. <laughs> She's like, okay, whatever. So unless a person themselves looks at something, usually through a question and starts looking at it, like if like, I don't know, like if, if cholesterol is so bad, then why does her body make it? And then you start getting people to look and start to observe for themselves and then develop their own knowledge. That's really the way to teach people. So um, I'm going to be doing a lot more of that to help other people, you know, just have some insights on how to help other people, how to teach other people. That's really how we're going to get there with groups and things like people have groups and churches and things that they can use. Um, and so that's kind of been very successful too, because when you help people, um, you know, they tell others and it spreads. The other thing is that, um, it's great that these other companies are looking at um, different products and things. And what I want to do and get other people to do is support those products that are truly good, you know, versus some of the fake keto stuff with all this maltodextrin in there. I'm like, what? Like, I'm not going to promote that. Um, I mean, I, uh, I recently found a, a cereal that was really great ingredients. And it was like, there's everything in there was amazing. So I just mentioned it. I think they they sold out within within the, within the day, you know, just That's by cool. mention it. So when I think what we should all do as influencers is to really support these products that are doing it right, and again, demand drive the demand to good foods when they go to the grocery store. So this next year, I'll be doing a lot of education with labels, with uh, showing basic definitions on on labels like this so they can see like well, why do they have dextrin in this product you know like what so what does that mean and just educate people on basic definitions so i'll be doing a lot of that and i want to share that and uh so stay tuned for more on that as well because we do want to uh all uh basically we need to um not fight each other but come together as one group because sometimes right now like you'll have even doctors attack like keto doctors even doing critiques on me like oh yeah he's talking about lemon water i'm like out of all the things you can attack someone for <laughs> lemon water is probably the least dangerous like oh my gosh lemon water oh yeah i'm like why don't you attack something like ultra processed foods like 
but they do it to get attention sometimes. So I think we need to gather the troops and come together and be organized uh, so we can collectively just uh, have a voice because the power is in numbers. Well, there are Thank a lot you, of us out here. So whenever you're yeah. ready to mobilize oh, yeah. us all, we're with you. Thank you, right. man. Thank you. Thank you. I love that. Uh, Dr. Bray has to go, but what was the uh, cereal that you found that was good? Oh, uh, it was called the, I think it was called the health, Oh, I knew you were going to ask me that. E email, uh, email me. Let me know. Okay. I'll, look the, I'll, I'll let email everybody know. You. Oh, wait, yeah. wait. I just found it. I just found it. This one right here. The Granola Bakery. Oh, I haven't heard of that. Okay. There you go. Yeah. I was like, wow, someone is doing it right. So, um, and then of course we have this one too, right? <laughs> yeah. Healthier than red meat and <laughs> eggs, by the way, according to Tufts University. Yeah, that's right. awesome. Um, Dr. Brooke, thank you for your time. Uh, you're going to be uh, this weekend, you're coming down to Florida, you're where I am, but you're going to be in Boca, Low Carb USA. So if you're going to the conference, say hello to Dr. Berg. You're speaking on Sunday, I believe, the last day? Yes. And then are you confirmed for KetoCon yet? Or is that yes. still? Yes, yeah. so I'll be at KetoCon too uh, at the end of May. So I'll speak there as well. I'm, I'm going to do all the all the summits. So um, it's a lot better than arranging summits on your own because that is a <laughs> lot of work. I'd rather just show up and speak. So I'll get to meet everyone and. Uh, uh, definitely, we need to um, make a make a difference here. So, thanks, Ben, for all that you do, and I really appreciate you uh, you basically doing your channel and uh, having these groups and supporting everyone. I can see it's obvious that uh, you're helping a lot of people, so I appreciate that. Yeah, your fingerprints are all over all the people that I get to help, and you inspire me all the time. So, I'll see you in Texas. I'll be at KetoCon. All of us will be there. A lot of us will be there. Have a safe trip to Florida. Thank you so much for what you're doing, Dr. Berg, and we'll chat soon, okay? Okay, great. My pleasure. Thank you.